Good morning and welcome to our online worship service at First Baptist Church in Madison, Wisconsin, a faith community for all people. We're so glad that you're here. We welcome you and your participation as we engage in the worship of our God. Today is a special day in the life of our church. This is the last Sunday for Pastor Michael to be with us. Been with us for two years now as our uh, interim or transitional minister. And at the end of the service, we will have a reception to thank him for his ministry with us. Hope you'll stay around for that. Our opening hymn is, Come, Ye Thankful People, Come. this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes to his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you as a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it for the least of these who are members of my family, you did it for me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal flame, fire, prepared for, for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. 
I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick? or in prison and did not take care of you. Then he will answer them. Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. May God bless the reading and hearing of his word. Amen. Let me say just um, uh, here at the beginning before we uh, uh, have our time of, of silence and then the uh, uh, sermon, I'm uh, deeply touched by the, uh, well, by many things, but particularly the, uh, the slideshow uh, this morning. Uh, I could tell, I could tell the uh, they were taken early in my time here because I was wearing a tie. <laughs> and also I was really greasing back my, my hair. <laughs> also, um, I was touched by the uh, prelude, uh, which was uh, Alleluia, uh, uh, originally written by uh, Leonard Cohen uh, at Walter Wink's uh, memorial service. Uh, back in uh, 2012, um, his grandson sang uh, that song, uh, and I've mentioned Walter a number of times uh, as being one of my mentors. So thank you. I, this uh, <laughs> that is coincidence, or uh, as a, a friend of mine used to say, uh, God incidents. <laughs> I can't even say that God incidents anyway. Um, certainly, you know, I didn't. I didn't know that until uh, until I saw it in the bulletin. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I'm appreciative of um, of that song and those um, uh, those pictures. So let's have some silence, and then we'll um, uh, have the uh, prayer of illumination. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Today is my last Sunday here, the last Sunday of the transition, and the last Sunday of the church year. It is also Thanksgiving Sunday, and we here at First Baptist Church have much to give thanks for. We are thankful for the ways that we have been fed, welcomed, and visited in the transition. Come ye thankful people, come. I can think of no passage better to end the transition on than this passage, which is so close to my heart, my new heart, and so close to yours as well. As I think about this passage in the context of the end of the transition, I think of three things. Love wins, laughter wins, and letting go wins. So let's look at each of those in turn. First, love wins. That line came into prominence after the 2015 
Supreme Court, Supreme Court case that made same-sex same marriage the law of the land. But it's apropos here. In the end, what will remain is what we have done for others. The theme, love wins, is consistent with what Matthew has been saying throughout his gospel. In the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. And also in the sermon, Jesus says, Give to everyone who begs from you, and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. In the passage that we are looking at, Jesus talks about the least of these, my brothers and sisters. We are God's and Christ's family, and we feel the hurts of one another and we heal the hurts of one another and we reach out to the world this church does much for others for this community and for the world through its budget and through its various ministries that in which so many of you are active first baptist church reaches out, as we used to say at Howard, to the least, the lost, and the left out. And this church has reached out to me. In many ways, when I came here to Madison, Wisconsin, on January 6, 2019, Epiphany, I was hungry, thirsty, a stranger, naked, sick, and imprisoned. Sometimes metaphorically and sometimes literally. You fed me, gave me something to drink, welcomed me, clothed me, took care of me, and visited me. But the church to which I came in early 2019 was also hungry, thirsty, a stranger, naked, sick, and imprisoned. It was imprisoned by hopelessness. It was sick with despair of how to proceed. It was hungering and thirsting for righteousness sake. In the transition, we have fed one another. We have given one another something to drink. I remember last year telling a story of heaven and hell. In hell, everyone had long spoons instead of arms. And they and when they tried to feed themselves, the spoons went right by. In heaven, though, they still had those long spoons for arms, but they were feeding one another. Here at First Baptist Church, we have been feeding one another, giving one another something to drink, welcoming one another, visiting one another. So yes, love wins. Another way to say the same thing is to say compassion wins. Compassion literally means suffering with. We have suffered together with COVID. 
suffered together with not being able to see folks and touch them and hug their necks and shake their hands. Yet through Zoom, through phone calls, through letters, through video chats, we have persevered. We have fed, we have given to drink, we have given visits, we have persevered. We have seen Jesus in the least of these, and we have seen them in ourselves. We have seen Jesus in our hurts, our hunger, our thirst, our illness. Even in COVID, love wins. Second, <laughs> second, <laughs> second, <laughs> laughing wins. That might seem strange to you. Laughing wins. <laughs> but look at this passage and see how funny it is. The Lord says that the righteous have done all these wonderful things to him. And the righteous say with some bewilderment, um, Lord, that's, uh, that's great that we reached out to you, but um, we, we were so righteous that we've forgotten when all these things happened. So, could you remind us when it was that you were hungry and, and we gave you food uh, when you were thirsty and all that? We've, we've just been doing so much good work, we just don't remember. Could you remind us? When was it? <laughs> and a little later on, the Lord bellows, depart from me into the eternal fire, for I was hungry and you gave me more no food and these wicked will be all anxious and say oh but 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 lord 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 when was it that you were hungry and and all that and we didn't help you <laughs> and the lord cast these people into the eternal fire eternal punishment is this the same guy who said, blessed are the meek, who talks about his heavenly father, who cares for the birds of the air and the flowers of the field? The Lord of love will not cast people into the eternal fire. <laughs> he will not make us crispy critters. Jesus here is telling a story. And all this talk about eternal damnation is just to illustrate that we encounter him, we encounter Jesus in caring for others. In some way, that's a laugher. <laughs> that person in the hospital is Jesus? <gasps> that person in prison, whether in a prison because of a crime or in the prison of their own home due to COVID, that person is Jesus. <laughs> That's a laugher. What would even be funnier is that we all feel guilty and do nothing. Many of us have a hyperactive guilt gland, a hyperactive guilt gland that is easily activated at church. Oh my gosh, I should be doing more for the homeless. I should be doing blah, 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 blah. All of this, all of this stuff. Well, I have good news. God is not interested in your guilt. Let me say that again. God is not interested in your guilt. God is interested in your love, your compassion, and your laughter. The heart
hardest that I have laughed recently was watching a video of the televangelist Kenneth Copeland. On the Sunday following the election, in other words, just what, two weeks ago or something like that, Copeland said from the pulpit, this was a Sunday following the election, he said from the pulpit, the Associated Press said that Joe Biden is president. And then he laughs maniacally for several seconds. And several people in the congregation join him. That video has been seen eight million times. I've probably watched it a million or two myself. Well, not, not really. The laugh, of course, is on Copeland because Biden is the president-elect. Copeland adds, yeah, Joe Biden is president and Mickey Mouse is king. <laughs> no, Copeland, Jesus is king, not Mickey Mouse, and Biden is president-elect. <laughs> I didn't... I didn't have the heart to tell him who is a vice president elect. The second thing I thought about after that video is that Copeland reminds me of Laughter Club and Laughter Yoga. All over the world, begun in India, there are laughter clubs. There's even one in Fitchburg. I've attended laughter clubs in Maryland, and they're just various exercises that one does to induce laughter. You know, one of my favorites was the milkshake. You know, <laughs> Another was the cell phone. <laughs> So the purpose of these exercises is to laugh, just simply to laugh, which results in a more positive outlook on life, decrease in depression, and good feelings um, toward oneself and others who are laughing. And it's just fun. I've read somewhere the joy of the Lord is my strength. Now this congregation likes to laugh uproariously at times. Stop doing it. No, 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 no. <laughs> Keep it up. <laughs> Blessed are those who can laugh at themselves because they will always be amused. In the video of Copeland, he says, laughter is deterrent to pain. <laughs> well, it is, it is painful for him and other evangelicals to realize that the toddler in chief will not be continuing in office. I preached on laughter and humor earlier in the interim. Laughter is a way that we experience the presence of God as surely as prayer or meditation. Indeed, one can make the case that laughter is prayer or meditation. It takes us out of ourselves and our current predicament. Laugh and the world laughs with you, cry, and you cry alone. Not sure that's true. Sometimes <laughs> you just laugh by yourself and that's okay. Other times you cry and people in front of others and people comfort you. However you laugh, whether it's watching comedies, you know, funny movies, funny TV shows, reading funny books, you are experiencing God. And it's a great way to spend a pandemic. So, 
Love wins, laughter wins, and finally, letting go wins. Releasing, surrendering, even losing wins. Earlier in the gospel, Jesus said, says, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose, who lose their life for my sake will find it. These words are counter-cultural. What? Surrendering? But that's, that's wrong with winning. Surrendering, though, means losing and thus winning. In many ways, the person currently hunkered, bunkered down in the White House understands that very well, as did another rich man a few years ago, Ted Turner, owner of CNN, who said, Christianity is for losers. He was right. Christianity is for losers. We let go. We empty ourselves. There's even a fancy word for it, kenosis. Kenosis. That is self-empty. Paul sets forth the example of Jesus who emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. But he also said, God highly exalted him. So what we give up, what we let go, what we release, we gain by reigning with Christ. The last Sunday of the Christian year, that is this, this Sunday, is the reign of Christ Sunday. We can experience that reign in the midst of COVID, in the midst of MAGA rallies, and I said MAGA rallies and not maggot rallies. I hope you heard, heard that very clearly. We experience that reign of Christ only by letting go of our agendas, our preconceived notions, and our privilege. I've seen people let go of a lot of things here at First Baptist Church. They have let go of the pains of the past. They have forgiven, taking a cue from Robert Enright and the International Forgiveness Institute here in Madison. They have let go of anger at people. They have let go of sadness and disappointment. They have let go of grudges. They recognize that Jesus is in the people who give them such grief. In other words, God is in the grief givers. Who pulls your chain? <clears throat> well, whoever does, God is there. Who really sends you into a tailspin? Huh? Through that person, Christ is calling you. Who really, who really grinds your gears? Well, it's the Spirit that is speaking to you. We let go 
of that which no longer serves us. Some here at First Baptist Church use the breath as they inhale fully and then release. They consciously breathe. They imagine that their breath is the breath of the Holy Spirit. Let me begin that sentence again. They imagine that their breath is the Holy Spirit that they breathe in and then release out into the world. So, love wins, laughter wins, and letting go wins. So much winning, so much losing. I would like to conclude with a poem that I've read a number of times here at First Baptist Church and various times. Lucille Clifton's The Lesson of the Falling Leaves. The leaves believe such letting go is love, such love is faith, such faith is grace, such grace is God. I agree with the leaves. I will add, and so do I. Amen. We come now to the time of our offering. Uh, when we return to God, a portion of the gifts that we have received from God. Indeed, all that we have is a gift from God. These gifts are used to sustain both the ministry of this church and of the broader Christian ministry around the world. You can make a donation by sending a check to the church or on the church website using your credit card or by direct transfer from your bank account. Jenny will now lead us in singing our offertory hymn, Give Thanks.
now the prayer, the offertory prayer. God, whose we are and whom we serve, help us to glorify you this day in all the thoughts of our hearts, in all the words of our lips, and in all the work of our hands, as is fitting those who are your servants, through Jesus Christ, who gave us everything for us, we pray. Amen. We now come to the time of prayers of the people. Please place your joys and concerns in the chat box, and then I will lift those joys and concerns during the pastoral prayer. Now we will have another song. Here in this one and women lay, many a dream have died. Like a tree planted by the water, never will run dry. So living water flowing through, God, we thirst for more of you. Fill our hearts and flood our souls with one desire. Just don't know you and to make you know. It's time for us to more than just survive. We were made to thrive. Into your world we're digging deep to know our Father's call. Reaching who we are to live in a water flowing through. God, we thirst for more of you. Fill our hearts and flood our souls with one desire. Just to know you and to make you know we lift your name on high. Shine like the sun, make darkness run in half. We know we were made for so much more than ordinary lives. It's time for us to more than just survive. We were made to.
to thrive. Joy unspeakable, faith unsinkable, love unstoppable, anything is possible. Joy unspeakable, faith unsinkable, love unstoppable, anything is possible. Joy unspeakable, faith unsinkable, love unstoppable, anything is possible. Joy unspeakable, faith unsinkable, love unstoppable, anything is possible. Just don't know. To make you know me, lift your name on high. Shall I the sun may down his run and hide? We know we will make for so much more than ordinary lives. It's time for us to mourn and just survive. We were made to thrive. Amen. We were made to thrive. And one way that we thrive is through prayer, through praying together. We lift up all of these joys, all of these concerns, dear God. We praise you for this opportunity to gather once again in worship, and especially on this Thanksgiving Sunday. And we have much to be joyful about, much to thank you for. We thank you, God, for bringing me here to this group. And thank you for the thoughtful nudges that you have nudged me toward and that I have passed on to the congregation. To help this church as it moves in a new direction. We pray for a safe trip for me and a enjoyable time with my family. We give thanks for the spiritual guidance that you have given me, dear God, to pass on to the congregation. Thank you, dear God, for the gift of laughter. And we pray that we will remember to laugh. Dear God, thank you for the ministry that we have had together. That is you, myself, and this congregation. And we pray that the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of this congregation will be realized and released in the transition and in the middle of the pandemic. We pray for God's blessings upon me and my loved ones in the next chapter of my ministry. Thank you, God, for all that you have given me and that all this church has given me and that we have shared in this. We pray for healing prayers for Edith Davison as she recovers from surgery at, uh, and at home with Jim's continued competent care. Thanks to Marie O. And on on Riri, anyway, thank you for my ability to pronounce that. Uh, but thank you for 
all that Marie has done to help us through this transition period and blessings to her as she takes on a new responsibility in um, in Valley Forge with the National. We lift up the concern or the prayers for uh, another dear, dear friend of Bill and Mary Fiore, who has just received a diagnosis of an aggressive kidney cancer metastasized to her lungs. This, this person has been a friend and mentor to Bill and Mary. We join our prayers with Brenda as she prays for a friend's son named Mercury. He was born premature and during his six month stay in the neonatal intensive care, it was discovered he has a rare but curable form of cancer. He is now doing chemotherapy and we pray that you will comfort him, that you and his parents, and that you will guide the caregivers. We thank you for the ministry that we have done together here at First Baptist Church. We thank you for how you have been dedicated to us and people have been dedicated to one another, to your will, and to this church. May you bless the ministry of this church and the ministry which you have for me in store. We thank you, God, for this opportunity to minister together. We pray for the Lori Mancari family. Lori, a member of Mount Zion, passed away this week. We pray that you will comfort and support her family. Also, we join with Gloria in asking that, that you may bless the family of Don Law, who passed away this week. He was a dear friend of, of Gloria's from her college days. And um, grateful, we are grateful for the genuine joyful presence that you have given to us as we have ministered together and all that God has, and all that you, dear God, have brought us in the transition. All these things we lift up all these joys all these thanksgiving all of these concerns all of these requests we lift up to you in the name of the one who taught us to pray saying holy one our only home hallowed be your name may your day dawn your will be done here as in heaven. Feed us today and forgive us as we forgive each other. Do not forsake us at the, at the test, but deliver us from evil. For the glory, the power, and the mercy are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Ending in authorized ministry. The Reverend Dr. Michael Newhart first came here to First Baptist Church in January 2019. Pastor Michael, you have spent the past 22 months with us, giving us the time to continue the ministry and mission of this church while the search committee was allowed the chance to work patiently and diligently to discover God's direction toward a new senior minister to guide us in the future work of First Baptist. Our new settled pastor, Tim Schaefer, called by the voice of the congregation is soon to arrive. It is time to end this interim time, which we do in love. 
During this interim, you have gifted us with your knowledge, your spiritual wisdom, your guidance, your patience, your care and love. Church families change. Our God remains a constant, but people come and go. Pastors come and go. We share our burdens and struggles, our joys and hopes. Babies are born and we celebrate new life among us. We witness the sacrament of baptism. Children grow and grow up. Our youth confirm their faith and we witness them pledge their commitment to God and to this congregation. People commit themselves to one another in love and faithfulness, and we gather to celebrate marriages. Loved ones and friends among, the, among us come to the end of their living. We grieve and come together to witness to the resurrection. Individuals move into our community and church life. We welcome new members. Others leave us, moving away to new places, new experiences, and new opportunities. You have guided us through the unknown and fearful world of a pandemic. It is important and right that we recognize these times of passage, these times of endings and beginnings. Today, we share a time of farewell with gratitude and love. Members of First Baptist, the interim time has come to an end and you are ready to set your sights on a new chapter in your life as a congregation. Pastor Michael, what would you say to the congregation at this time? Uh, I remember uh, I remember that uh, each each time that I have finished a uh, newsletter, a uh, visitor newsletter uh, article, that I end it with peace to you. And so it is indeed Jesus says, peace I leave to you, not as the world gives, do I uh, give to you. So I wish you peace. I'm wondering if there's something that I am supposed to have said oh. that <laughs> let me get the bulletin right up here. There we go. Okay, so here is, here is uh, what I say. I thank First Baptist Church, its members and friends, both grown-ups and children, for the respect, trust, and affection shown me during these past 22 months. I thank you for the ways you have accepted and responded to my leadership and challenged me as well as challenged yourselves. For anything I've done or not done that has been unfaithful to God's call to me or led you astray, I ask forgiveness. As I leave, I will carry with you, carry you with me, <laughs> carry you with me in my heart and prayers, for you have touched me as a person and as a pastor. I praise our God who has worked in and among us during this interim time. We receive your thankfulness and offer forgiveness. We also ask your forgiveness for ways we may have responded to you in anything less than love and kindness. We ask forgiveness for times we have not trusted you or God. We accept that you now leave us to serve in other ways and in other places. We express our gratitude for your time among us. Your influence on our faith and faithfulness will not leave us at your departure. To Pastor Michael, do you offer your blessing on this congregation and their continuing ministry and leave them with your support and encouragement for building a relationship with their incoming Pastor Tim, mm. who was ready to come to serve? I do. 
and to the congregation of First Baptist. Do you, the members and friends of First Baptist Church, acknowledge that the time has come to release Pastor Mike from the duties of serving you? We do. God, whose love and grace are everlasting, help each of us to trust the future which rests in your care. The interim time experienced here at First Baptist Church saw laughter and tears, hopes and frustrations. Guide us as we hold these cherished memories, but move in new uh, directions until that time to come when we are completely one with you and with each other. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. For this reason, we bow our knees before God, our Creator, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. We pray that according to the riches of God's glory, we will all be strengthened in our inner being with power through the Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith as we are being rooted and grounded in love. We pray that we may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to the one who, by the power at work within us, is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To God be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. I want to highlight a few things for our announcements. First, Kelsey, Matt, and Jenny are planning a Thanksgiving sing-along this coming Wednesday evening at uh, 7.30 p.m. There's a chance to sing some of your favorite Thanksgiving music. The details and the Zoom join link are in the bulletin. Second, I want to mention that the deacons are looking for volunteers to help with keeping in contact with our church members who are alone and feeling isolated during this pandemic. This is what they're referring to as Deacon Buddies. If you can help, contact Mary Fiore. More information in the bulletin. Third, the prayer meeting for this thir coming Thursday has been canceled because of Thanksgiving. It will resume the following Thursday under the leadership of Pastor Tim. Next, an online poll has been set up to help our new pastor get acquainted with us. The poll is an opportunity for you to give Pastor Tim some information about yourself. The deadline for doing this is this coming uh, next Sunday. More information on how to access that poll is in the bulletin. Next Sunday is Pastor Tim Schaefer's first Sunday with us. It is your first chance to welcome him to Wisconsin and to our church. You will want to be here for that. A drive-by at the church to donate items uh, for Nehemiah Essentials Kits is scheduled for next Sunday from noon to 1 p.m. It will be in the church parking lot. Uh, for more information on what uh, items they're looking for, see an email that went out uh, just the last day or two, or contact Jennifer Angelo. Uh, at the same time as the drive-in, you will be able to uh, meet and greet Pastor Tim and his husband, John, uh, uh, at, at the church parking lot between 12 and 1. Uh, it's actually a physical seeing and greeting, not a virtual one, but you will be expected to maintain social distancing. Our closing hymn now is 
Now we thank all our God. benediction, I invite you to uh, put your hands in a posture of receiving. And at one moment in the benediction, I'll ask you to switch that as a blessing to each other. So receive this benediction this morning. As we move forward from this time of worship, may the Holy Spirit soften our spirits one degree more that we allow the good that has been shared, experienced, and learned to take root deeper into our hearts, our mm. characters, and our beings. Not just from this hour, but from this whole transitional journey. Spirit, we ask that you go with Pastor Michael as he reunites with his family and thereafter steps into his next assignment that you are preparing. Spirit, be with the family and friends of First Baptist Madison, prompting them with moments to give thanks this coming week for all that you have done with and through them. Grant them grace for their next chapter of mission. And through all of this, may you, God, be praised. And if now you would stretch your hands out one to another. Now to all, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Mm. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.